I've been thinking about the past ever since I made my last video about Nick Cave and a graphic novel about his life. I'm not nostalgic, and but I do have an interest in history, which unfortunately makes you revisit your own past, whether you like it or not. I think when I was 30 or 31, I returned to the small town. I had uh, spent some of my early childhood in. I had not been back in many, many years. I'd gone to a Catholic school and I revisited it. I do remember we had priests from um, other countries at our parish. Mind you, I lived in a very small Texas town. If you've ever seen the film Lone Star, you have an idea of what life was like, at least for me in the 1970s. Um, well, I remember one of the priests was pretty um, bitter about being there. We can always smell the alcohol in his breath. He was from Mexico. And we did have two priests from Spain. There was one who was very young, and we liked him a lot. He, he would play soccer with us on the weekends uh, after school, I mean, after like on the Fridays. And the confessions were interesting with him because we would sit at the pew with him while the rest would wait in the aisle. He wouldn't take us into the little room for the confessions. Many of the girls had huge crushes on him. And he was definitely of the school of the New Testament. He was very kind. He never really judged us. I frankly don't remember how many Hail Marys or Our Fathers he had me do. But he was the exception to the case because many of the other priests were very Old Testament. There was one who was also from Spain and he replaced this young priest who when we returned to school one year, he was gone. No explanations. This priest was older. And I remember once during mass, he told us that kissing was a sin if you were young, like a minor. It was elementary school, mind you. And I remember one of the girls spoke up and said, how could that be a sin to kiss another boy? And he said, because of the thoughts that crept into your mind. In the small town I lived in, there was a theater. Because there was two theaters and one drive-in. On Saturdays, when I was six, seven, eight years old, I would be dropped off and watch whatever movie was available. If it was rated R, I could go in. If I was able to sneak in, I mean. And we're going, when it came to drive throughs uh, I mean drive-in theaters, we had neighbors who would sometimes take us. And we would see all kinds of movies. R-rated films, PG films, didn't matter. We would watch it. I was a good student and um, I guess a good son. I mean, I behaved and followed the rules and such. So I was able to watch what I liked and watch as much TV as I liked and read what I liked. And eventually I got into comic books. Which brings me to Mr. Luis Garcia. This book came out about a year or two ago. It's a biography and also it's a um, compilation of some of his work.
1975, uh, Garcia returned to the small town he grew up in. He had been gone, I think, for about 17, 18 years. He left when he was 10 and then moved to Barcelona. And this would have been 1975. He said that when he arrived in this small town, there was a Proustian experience, in reference to Marcel Proust and his work, Remembrance of Things Past. It was a historical memory of the aftermath of the Spanish Civil War, basically. It had such an impact on him, going back there and all the memories that he had when he heard the uh, chicharras. Spanish for the cicadas, because that suddenly opened up a flood of memories to him. Made me think of Cinema Paradiso when the film director returns home and he sees everyone in, in the square. Now, now aged, of course, and he himself is middle aged. Any event. The experience led Luis Garcia to write what uh, he considered the first autobiographical comic strip published in Spain, named uh, Chicharras. It's something he did not mean to do, obviously, but going back home again left such an impression on him. The story begins with a quote from Bob Dylan's Blowing in the Wind, which came out in 1962. I think most of you are probably familiar with the lyrics of how many roads must a man walk down before you can call him a man. How many seas must a white dove sail before she sleeps in the sand, finding peace at last? His friend Carlos Jimenez and fellow artist was with him during the creation of this brilliant strip and was inspired to write his own autobiographical story, Baracuellos, a few months later. What you see here, what you see here is Luis coming home, walking down the streets, remembering where he lived, remembering his father's anger, his mother's defense. Remembering his friends and wondering if they still live there, working the land. He had, his family had left and gone to Barcelona when he was young, a major city. But the town had not changed much. If anything, it had just now had less people. His memory, his first sexual experience, shadows, darkness, and freshness, hand stained by something new and uncom- unknown sense, he wrote. The girl's name was Juani. Juani's body and the first mortal sin. These two pages are fascinating because what you have here is the sermon of a priest talking about sin and being very anti-Semitic and talking about the dangers of the pleasures of the flesh and yet the hands of Father Juan, Luis writes.
He meets an old man who looks a lot like Brescia. And he tells them that most of the many people have just moved away. Just like his parents had done, Luis's parents had done. He tells him he's gone for 18 years. The old man tells him that the school has closed and eventually the wealthy will move away. Luis gets into his car and he puts in a cassette no longer of Bob Dylan but by Paco Ibanez who was a Spanish folk singer and contemporary of Bob Dylan who's singing a song from a poet named Gabriel Celaya, who was a post-Civil War poet, who had been opposed to Franco. Mind you, when Luis returns back, it's 1975, the end of the Franco regime, after Franco has died. And Chicharras, or Cicadas, as we know, can sometimes hibernate for 17 years, and they... Well, not exactly hibernate, but they live underground. And when they do rise from the ground, they go up to the trees, they mate, and then they die. And it's a new beginning. Which is how the song ends, the sign of something new. The strip was not intended to be published. And it didn't appear till a few years later in a Spanish magazine. And when asked Luis said where do I come from? I come from my childhood. He quoted Antoine Saint Exemplary, the author of The Little Prince. A story that I also read when I was very little. Chicharras, Luis Garcia, the art of Luis Garcia. Thank you for your